guys, welcome back to Prepping in Progress. I'm Steve. And I'm Kim. And we've had some requests and some comments and discussions on various Facebook groups, including our own, uh, more direct messages to us, about medical supplies. Medical supplies. Medical supplies. Okay, so are we just doing a comprehensive list, or? Well, we're going to kind of do, break it up and do two weeks worth of uh, discussions. Awesome. Um, we're going to take a look at 10 common and basic things that everyone should have in their first aid kit. Okay. And uh, in see. their house. In their house, okay. And then, I believe a week later, we're going to do some weird and uncommon, more prepper-ish, hoorah stuff. So we're going to be focusing on medical. 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 <laughs> All right, guys, so stay with us while we go over 10 basic prepper medical supplies. Just more really quick. What if you were in the hospital or something like that? It's just where you 
you've washed your hands, but you may have touched something, or not really gotten dirty or anything, but it's just for like, if you touch something or somebody who may have something, but I mean, I see hand sanitizer stations all over, but. No, not exactly. I'm not trying to correct you. No, no, please do. Um, I'm not the medical guy, so these are questions that I'm hoping other people may be bringing up. First of all, what we have in the hospital is usually a foam, and mm -hmm. it comes in an aerosol can dispenser. There's one inside each every ER room. There's one on, on the walls outside uh, in the ER. You walk in, you glove up, you do whatever, you take the gloves off, you immediately hand sanitize. Okay. Every time because you, you touch your into, glove? every time you walk into a room, and you don't know if your patient has something communicable, and brushing your hand, okay. or so it's more of a preventative, not so much scrubbing and cleaning up a wound, but it's more for the caretakers to make sure they're not transmitting yes. different things to other patients or cross-contaminating patients, cross-contaminating okay. ourselves. That makes sense. So hand sanitizer is not a substitute for soap; it Absolutely is just not. like an in between. Right. Okay. See? Questions. I need them. There you go. I'm Vanna White in this stuff. You're Vanna White in this stuff. <laughs> well, let me get a drink. Okay. Some alcohol? Not that kind of alcohol? It's not that kind of alcohol. Okay. Um, alcohol. We've covered this before. You know, it kills germs, kills all manner of things. It's good. I like alcohol. In all its forms. Actually... Now, witch or green alcohol? Oh, this is witch hazel. That has witch hazel in it, okay, yes. Okay, but it's alcohol with witch hazel. Okay. Yes. I've heard about witch hazel uh, for different things. For the, yeah, it says minor cuts, scrapes, and six bites. It's supposed to be for like alcohol and relief. Yes. Alcohol, when is the appropriate time to use alcohol? Here, Here's the one thing that I... Oh, we also have the, the little swabs. Ah, yes. Yeah. We, we do have alcohol swabs as well. Yeah. Here's one thing with alcohol that I caution. Mm -hmm. um, on an open wound, yes, it burns, but alcohol can kill off the skin where it touches, and therefore when someone goes to do a suture, that's the interior internal skin is already dead, and it won't begin to fuse. It has to work its way around that. Um, it's kind of like uh, using the <coughs> the clot uh, powder. That stuff actually gets in and burns the wound closed, and it's it's much harder once they debride it. I said the only I guess experience I have is you know if you got like like a band aid to put on because they you'd either clean it up right quick with an alcohol swab. Um, before I get my shots, always get an alcohol swab. But, Things like that. But on your shot, is your skin already compromised? Well, that's what I'm saying. Is these are the only experiences I right. have with doing any kind of alcohol. Is see if I'm giving you a shot or going for an IV. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got some dirt here from work. The alcohol swab is going to sterilize that. Might take off some of the dirt, and then I'm going to go for my IV. Okay, so it's a sterilizing. Yes. Okay. Um, I mean, I know most people that are out there, like I said, these are dumb questions. I don't know how, what level people might be at when it comes to their medical knowledge of when is an appropriate time to use yeah. these things. But like I said, these are just... On an open, things. on a large open wound, I prefer soap and water first. Okay. As opposed to alcohol. But these are great for small. Yes. Okay. And your favorite is you love... I love the winter grain. Okay. Okay. The actual honest-to-goodness made with mint winter green. Okay. And what's that for? Headaches. Okay. That's different. Um, especially sinus headaches, potential headaches. If you take a cotton ball and work it around your sinuses, it will relieve the headache. Oh, okay. So that's why you had me pick this stuff up. Yes. Okay. <laughs> man, like I said, it just gives me medical supply list. I have no idea what we need, uh, what we use half of it for, but I'm learning. There you go. Let's move on to our next contestant. Number four. Four? Number four. It is four. Hydrogen peroxide. Um, for wound cleaning as well, it does do a little bit of the same as alcohol on burning the ends. The cool thing about peroxide is it's... <laughs> Hi, guys. 
Hi. She's prettier than you, <laughs> or at least the whole lot of camera. Um, the cool thing about peroxide, it really doesn't disinfect so much as it lifts. It's a lifting agent. The bubbles you get with hydrogen peroxide are the death of white and red blood cells when it interacts with them. Now, while that's all going on, if you have flecks of dirt or something inside your wound, what it is doing is it is lifting it out and then you can take a so that's, gauze pad. It says a debriding agent. That's if you've got like grit in, in, the, wound. in the wound itself. So. Unlike alcohol, which is just like a quick swap, this yes. is what you're going to use if you say you've got dirt and stuff in the wound. Correct, but you know, keeping in mind it's reacting with the blood that you have in the wound, and it's going to lift scab and whatnot, break scab down. Okay. Somewhat, but it's quantity versus how it's going to work. I mean, if, if gotcha. you if you've got a piece of gravel that big stuck in your arm. A thimble full of peroxide is not, not going to, you know, you're going to need tweezers. Okay. So, keeping in mind my medical license is out, so you can't sue me. This is all <laughs> under fair use. <laughs> Entertainment purposes only. This is just medical supplies um, and kind of basic wound care. Uh, but how do, you know, what are you looking for? What are these purposes going to be? What are you looking to stock up on and why? And so, um, debriding wounds. Definitely a must, especially if you get the small scrapes and stuff like that. You're wanting to do preventative to infection and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Moving on to the next one. Oh, yeah, I had to double check the box before I looked because... You know, These are gauze, right? It is number, gauze. Number yeah. five, gauze. <laughs> Very common, you know. It's, yeah. These are gauze rolls. I picked these up on Amazon for really, really cheap. Uh, they just come in these nice little sterile packages. Um, but these should be in everybody's basic. I, yes. mean, I know how to at least use gauze, if nothing else. If you use an ace, an ace bandage, same principle. We put it there and then wrap it around. That's a roll. Now you have gauze squares that you can put on and then tape on. Like a makeshift bandage. Yes. Band but we went to that um, uh, wound class. Yes. Uh, what was it? Um, NWA Prepper put on a fast care wound wound care wound that, care uh, and we we use these to pack a, a gaping wound as yes. well and so learning definitely go get med, better medical advice than just on youtube please but taking it more advanced uh, wound care these are great like i said for for wrapping and keeping bandages on and things like that but they were also a, a must have for the packing of wound care as well uh, large gaping wounds Right. And at, yes, and at a fair price, if you can't find it on Amazon, you know what, don't even bother going to Amazon. We we did this before we knew about a really cool place called AdventureFrontier.com for all your medical needs. <laughs> Definitely check out NWA Preppers, Adventure.com. <laughs> AdventureFrontier.com. Oh, did I say Adventure? <laughs> Adventure Frontier. I mean, I'm, I'm half joking. Yes, I'm plugging him, but the simple fact is... Our air fryer just went off. <laughs> He's got good material at good prices. So, gauze. gauze. Everybody should have gauze. Okay, our sixth, sixth, sixth. We said uh, six too many times. Now we're in trouble. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, item is disposable gloves. I know we're all about the re reduce, reuse thing, but when it comes to Surgical gloves, medical gloves, get a lot. Um, Another item easy to find on Adventure Frontier, I do believe, but Amazon has them as well. Yes. <laughs> now, these are the powdered blue nitrile gloves. Uh, these are disposable. These can be used industrially um, for plumbing, sanitation, as well as you know, tattoo parlors will use them, and that is you know dealing with blood and mm -hmm. whatnot. Purpose of gloves. You don't get infected by something your patient may have. Your patient doesn't get infected by something you might have or you might have touched with your bare skin. You're not introducing things to the wound. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. But another thing. When it comes to gloves, latex. Some of the gloves that you will find out there are latex gloves. Many people have been developing a latex allergy 
over the last five to ten years. That is because until the latex free gloves, the only glove available for years were latex. That was the only rubber glove in surgery and everyone was exposed to it constantly. But they do have gloves out there for people who are sensitive to latex, whether allergy or just yes. sensitive. They, some, some people break out. I don't have a friend of mine. She can't wear latex gloves. You can't wear them. I, I get burn blisters, yeah. itty bitty burn blisters. So it's not I really feel it getting hot. Yeah, it's not. It's more of a sensitivity yes. to it more than any than an allergy per yes. se. Yes, okay. it's a contact sensitivity. So, latex free rubber gloves, first aid kit, must have lots of. And it's better to go with the latex free because if you're working on people, you may not know your patient may have a latex allergy that, that you don't know about. So yes. it's easier to go. Oop, the dog went after something. The corgi <laughs> found something. <laughs> so let's move on to our next Number one. Seven. Number seven? Corgi. <laughs> Corgi. Yes. Never go into any kind of wound care without your favorite personal companion. They make great Chinese food, and the fur can be used to patch any wounds on people. Well, she keeps interrupting, so I might as well brought her into the video at this point. <laughs> no. Our next one are masks. Quit chewing on my fingers. When it comes to BSI, body substance isolation, um... Mask and gloves are a must. I would also throw out that glasses of some kind or over glasses would be essential. Um, you can't guarantee that you're going to just be working on your family members who you know what they have and what they don't have. Masks are great if you have someone throwing up or with a chest wound who is breathing out blood particles into gasping. It keeps it from you opening your mouth and hi, I'm uh, and getting that in possible infection. I mean, look, guys, let's be gross. Back of an ambulance is the world's greatest erector set and Lego set where you can mix and match and make things happen. But it's also one of the dirtiest, most infected areas, and you never know what you're going to meet from time to time. But if Say an SHTF situation. That's where I was about to go. Yeah, is you're also, you don't know what somebody that maybe is traveling in, and if you have a decon uh, decontamination or anything like that, yes. you may be required to say, uh, wear a mask for certain incubation periods, if yes. you're dealing with a pandemic, or say if somebody just has a flu bug, a flu bug can wreck a community quickly. I mean, we all talk about how our kids pick up things. Hey, we need teething rings. Um, but, oh, stop it. But they pick up things at school. All right, you got to go. You're no. distracted. <laughs> they pick up things at school and it spreads like wildfire. I mean, we've got kids and the minute they get something at school, they bring it home and then next thing you know, we have it. And a flu, a cold, a stomach bug, anything like that can spread quickly through a small community. Uh, even if it's just your friends and family that's in your bug out location, having ways to isolate yeah. is basic. I mean, I hate to say it, you know, you may think this sort of thing may be getting a little advanced, but I think this is pretty basic because you want to isolate anybody or keep, you know, like he said, keep from any kind of contamination to yourself to keep the disease from constantly spreading. And the flu, uh, doesn't it mutate for each person? It changes per person. And so, yeah. Um, in fact, if you want to even go worst case scenario than that, Ebola is transmitted through all bodily fluids. Bodily gets scary. <laughs> Even the wet on your eyes. Oh. So we have goggles. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we were talking about. So let's move on to our next one because this is fun. La not last. Okay. But we're getting there. Number eight. Number eight. Tape. If you don't have gauze, you got to have tape, right? That's right. And what makes this different than, say, what our son did today, which was use duct tape? <laughs> I love him. He did it right. I told him to improvise. Yeah, because he ended up using duct tape on his wound today. <laughs> which there's nothing wrong with that. It, whatever works, right? Oh, believe me, I've used that. This, they're, they're billing this as Next Care Flexible Clear Tape. 
There's a bunch of different kinds that we have downstairs. Okay, this is IV tape. Okay, guys, let me just let me just break it down for you. IV tape. Get IV tape. It's I can't really show it to you, but it it is more breathable. It's got more holes poked in the tape itself, so it doesn't when you put it on. The skin can breathe a little bit better when, especially when it sweats. Okay, so that makes sense. Where I've had, where I've had um, that solid, yeah, solid, first aid tape. Yeah, and it does seem to get where you're you're sweaty underneath it. Yeah, and it just yeah, it's kind of gross and yeah. The other thing is with all the air holes on this stuff, mm -hmm. it tears like a hot knife through butter. Good to know. So it's easy to use. So easier to rip off a piece, of, use the yes. small pieces that you need. Okay. Well, see, in the field, when we were doing IVs, what we would do is we'd start pulling, we'd open up the tape, and I'd pull sections about yay big, and I would just tape Line them, them up. Okay. on whatever I had. Shoot, I've done it on a chair in a patient's home. <laughs> and you have five strips or so. Then you get your IV out, you get the catheter in, you know, get your flash, do everything. But then one over the top, you know, and sometimes we put an op side over, but then one over, one over, up, up, and then one to secure. And you were ready to rock and roll quickly and, and efficiently with this. And this stuff. can stay on a little bit longer because yes. it breathes, and so it yes. doesn't have to be changed out. I mean, you need to change your wounds regularly, but if you're going to have a wound that's going to be you're going to be moving and say it's not a debilitating one and you're going to be outside yes. working and stuff. This is more yes, what you want to go with. that is more what you want to go with. Okay. Sounds good. So tape, basic. You need to have, like, we have a lot. And so, yeah, because you... We can create a mummy wrapping with the tape we have. Can we tape the corner's mouth shut? <laughs> That'd be animal cruelty. I can't do that. He's barking. Oh, it's okay. She's barking at the cat. The cat's going to turn around and eat the corner. <laughs> Roxanne, that's enough. Moving on. <laughs> our ninth. Is this our ninth? This is our ninth. Okay. So we're almost done. And uh, I might need this because it's cold outside. <laughs> Baby, it's cold outside. Bring okay. me some chapstick. <laughs> so, yeah, it's an easy, basic. Um, of course, everybody out there knows how to use chapstick. But you're also going to talk about chapstick and Vaseline as well. We didn't have any to grab but we have some but this is it's down in our big tub of medical stuff so the chapstick was easier to grab but basically anybody that's had chapped lips know how hard it is to concentrate when mm -hmm. your lips are splitting and cracking especially if you're going long periods of time with chapped lips yes now let's throw out chapped lips doesn't just come in the summer when mm -hmm. you're hot and sweating you can get actual burned lips from wind when you're out during the winter. Yeah, I've had that plenty of times where I've been outside working and it's cold and windy and everything and my lips get just, they get to me, they get worse in the winter time just because the air is a little bit yeah. drier. Down here we've got really high humidity summers, so it doesn't affect me as much, but in the winter time the air is a lot drier and it makes my lips just, I constantly need it. And so this one's like, yeah. I, we all have some in our cars, purses, everywhere I think we have chapstick at. And see, believe it or not, growing up up north, the winters didn't bother me. For whatever reason, I, I could handle that, but it was the summers where you be licking your lips and suddenly you that realize, hot, duh. I, yeah. So, chapstick, good thing. But also, you know, Vaseline, petroleum jelly. Um, that can be used the exact same way but there's another proper use for this i know i'm, I'm go, kind of going off of the medical thing but fire mix it with some dryer lint mix the vaseline in with your dryer lint kind of or a cotton together. ball i've seen cotton balls used as well yeah. which is another common medical supply you should have so you can start fires with your medical supplies yes <laughs> but for now we're just talking about medical uses okay what can happen if you don't take care of like cracked splitting dry cracked and bleeding lips can lead to infection i mean your oral cavity is one of the most un uh, clean unhygienic areas infection. of your body okay so you've got open wounds and things like that anything could really get in and cause an infection yes. and something as simple as keeping Chapstick. your lips moisturized can keep from getting other things sores in there. okay 
So medically necessary. So that's mine. There you go. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> I wanted that. I'm trying to Vanna White this so you can see it. Number 10, last but not least. What is it? Triple antibiotic ointment. And I've used this a million times because I have children and they get scraped knees. And what do you always do? Wash it and put triple antibiotic That's on That's right. <laughs> Just slather them up in this stuff. <laughs> this is not a substitute though for antibiotics. It's Correct. preventative, right? Yes. Okay. So, Although I suppose you could, no, I'm not going to say that. Some's going to try it. Yeah, don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last but not least, triple antibiotic ointment. A good thing for minor cuts, abrasions, and whatnots. Look, guys, she grew up with it. She used it. I think I had it put on three times in my life because you need to let it breathe, my mama always said. But let me tell you something. With kids and people depending on me, this is always in my kit. Always in the house, always ready to go. So if you're a new beginning prepper and you're starting to wonder, what do I stock, what do I stock? These are some very basic items that you can put into your basement, into your medicine cabinet, and start. Everything is a step. It doesn't have to be go out and spend $10,000 today to get everything done. One With that, day, you can just buy a doctor, couldn't you? <laughs> or at least a medical license. <laughs> well, it goes back to what we were saying about an ounce of preventative. And yes. most of these things on this basic list are preventative care. Yes. Uh, some of it, like the debridement, things like that, are for after the fact. But that is to prevent infection. And during an SHGF situation, situation infection is going to be one of your major problems yes. because antibiotics are only a little bit more scarce. You know, you can go into the fish antibiotics and things like that, that we've talked about, but what's going to be easier on your budget is finding these ways to stop it before it starts. And a lot of the stuff that we've talked about today can be found on adventurefrontier.com. Absolutely. <laughs> I swear he's not paying us to do this, but he is a good friend. And <laughs> I will. I, buddy. I will be seeing him tomorrow. He's at, on your mind. And, at, <laughs> and after the video drops, he's going to look at me and go, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> but back to what I said ounce of prevention. prevention can beat or is better than a pound of cure, right? And, yes. and that's and that's what it boils down to is when you're talking about your basic medical supply, think a lot about preventative things. You know, even if something as basic as wearing gloves and a mask, just treating a wound, that way you're not introducing anything. You learn about how diseases are spread and making sure that you're stopping it before it runs rampant throughout your community. So that's all we have. That's all, you know, Steve's going to be going over just our, like I said, our basic medical supplies, 10. There's probably a million more out there y'all can think of. So y'all can go down in the comments. Uh, these are just 10 that we came up with kind of out of our own supplies. If y'all have got any that you would consider basic, put down. In Throw the them in. Let's make a list. Now, we are going to come next week of oddball, kind of uncommon medical supplies that you can throw in that aren't going to cost a lot but are good again for nice preventative care but also for after something may have started exactly so come back next week and we'll go into 10 uncommon medical supplies but this week thank you all so much for joining us i hope this helps at least get you jump started if you haven't really started any kind of medical supplies this may at least send you into the right direction about basics on how to start there you go. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for joining us. And don't forget to do the like, share, subscribe thingies downstairs. <laughs> and we'll see you in the field. Bye, guys.